Hello, it's Noisy Andrew from Party Meeple, and welcome to the internet. It's a bit chilly this morning, so I've got my uh, beach towel jacket on, complete with tassels. Today I'd like to uh, talk about my thoughts on board game design. I've been designing board games since about 2004, actually longer than that, but I'm only going to deal with the point where I designed games for other people to try and play. At the end of last month, I um, decided to go and look at my web stats on my, on my website and track how many times my free to print and play games have been downloaded. And uh, basically this is what I found. And I thought I'd just have a little bit of a chat about that. As you can see from the graphic, my most downloaded game is Tricky Pirates. I designed this in uh, 2015. Um, my sweetheart really likes playing 500 with her, I'm going to call them Gloomhaven friends because that's been their Wednesday night for the last some years. Not sure how many, seems a lot. Um, but they like playing 500 when they're like winding down for the evening. And I was like, can I design a trick taking game with some other aspects, in this case area control, um, you know, because they like trick taking. So that's what Tricky Pirates is. There's actually a, um, a video of how to play it. Um, if you look around, I'll put a link below. Um, if that's the sort of thing that interests you. Uh, the next game is Dive, Dive, Dive. Um, this was in 2018 I did this one. Um, and it's basically a cooperative game. You're a group of people on a U-boat in the Second World War and Anyone who's read anything about that will know just what a desperate situation that is. Um, there was a massive game that came out, which I think might have been um, Shag Started or whatever. Um, and it was too big for my liking. Um, then there's a game called The Hunted, which is an old Avalon Hill game, I believe. Um, and that just looked like a dice fest and I thought I wanted something a bit in between there where you had a little bit more agency than just rolling dice but you just weren't overwhelmed with like every mechanic ever designed in board gaming um, so Dive 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 came uh, to the surface we'll call it and um, probably played that a few times I actually put a bit of research into that I went to a fabulous web page called uboats.net and all the ships in the draw bag are actually ships that were sunk by U-boats um, with a little bit of history on the back of the tiles. So if you print and play Dive, 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 you'll have a little bit of history there as well. And that was 2018. And then the third most downloaded game uh, over the last six months of my website is uh, Trains on a Train. And in fact, in 2020, we did a train trip, not a very long one, just a day trip out to the the regionals and back again. And on the way home, uh, the sweetheart suggested, wouldn't it be good if we had a game we could play without a table? And Trains on a Train was born. I don't have a how to play video for this. Maybe I'll do one, but it's basically a bag draw and bag filling game with a memory component. You basically have to put locomotives in your bag um, with a uh, rolling stock that they can tow because they have a limitation. Um, and then you also have to have loads in the bag that match that rolling stock. Um, and then at the end of the game, you empty your bag and line things up and see just how you how many points you've scored for completed loads and rolling stock in your bag. And of course, if you have too much, there are, there are penalties. Um, I did a video about how to make the little bags for this a while back. If you have a look in, uh, if you look back on the Party Meeple channel, you will see a video about uh, very basic sewing skills that anybody could do. Anybody could do it. Everyone should be able to sew. It's great fun and very useful. Anyway, you can see there's some other games on this list. And interestingly, um, my little blowfish book got downloaded two times at the end of last month as well. Uh, for those that don't know, I built a little boat um, over the last few years as a bit of a cheap project that I wanted to like explore, experiment. Um, and I've written a book about that, so there'll be a link to that below as well. But anyway, let's get to um, ideas I think game designers should consider. And the first one is, this is a hobby, it's not a money-making exercise. If you think you're designing a game to make yourself a million dollars, well, you would be, uh, or you could be rather, uh, but you're not going to, um, buy a lottery ticket. Uh, it pays better 
uh, it pays faster and the bet the odds are probably better as well just do it because you feel like you need to I was part of a uh, poetry and writing collective for a while in fact I still write a little bit which is ironic because I failed English in secondary school um, and everybody there just does it because they love it and that's a good reason to put pen to paper and scribble around and design some board games and speaking of that the second thing I'd like to suggest is write your rules as you go and edit them as you go one of the things that um, happen all the time when you're designing a game you have all this idea you create a prototype and you push things around on it and you forget the bigger picture but if you've written that down if you've made a document then um, you're much more likely to stay on track and you're much more likely to pick up errors especially when you want someone to help you with the game rather than just explain it to them in their face um, you can give them a bit of paper and um, they can have a read through and then you can answer questions which is a much better way of helping or getting people to help you test your games point number three nobody's going to steal your ideas so don't be afraid to share them um, going back to point number one there's not money to be made in board game design um, some people do but it's really really rare um, you can look at the million games on um, board game geek and most of them have made nearly no money for the people responsible for their creation um, they'll have made something but you know this is it's not a living not not by a long shot so when you have an idea um, don't hide it this is like not the world of crazy patents or anything despite what some board gaming companies have tried in the past um, get it out there like have a have a have a go make something make a video post some pictures share your rules with people this is how your game design will um, improve and that that should be your goal the goal is like make the best game you can and the other thing is too is if you're the sort of person that has game ideas then you'll have loads of them there'll always be a new one to replace the last one and if this isn't the case well you know I'd be surprised I think most game designers have um, an idea every day and like I, I I have a traffic jam of ideas in my head and I have to like push some to one side so I can like focus on the ones I'm thinking about now point number four is learn to use GIMP which is some free graphic software or Inkscape also free um, even if you're not an artist if you have get your head around how to use GIMP you can make your prototypes that you're sharing with your friends to test much more appealing just grabbing some like doing some screen grabs of graphics on the web um, you're not making money out of this so don't feel ashamed about like getting a nice picture of a pirate for instance or something like that just so that you've got something to put on your artwork so that um, people can have a go and feel like you've put a little bit of effort into it in fact I actually really enjoy the part of board game design where I try and fit my graphics together I try and make something that looks and, and feels appealing um, to me that is just as important as the actual game mechanics that I'm trying to make work um, so I've done a video on how to use GIMP to make some money tokens but you could apply this to cards or anything else um, I'll put a link to that below as well um, it's not a hugely long video um, and I don't go about through the bazillion things that GIMP can do um, but it is enough to get you going it's certainly enough for you to be able to create something like a deck of cards with your own art without using one of the other card creating bits of software out there um, much more personal um, quite easily part five always look to remove complexity at least this is how i work i mean not everybody wants to design mage knight which like i don't even know how you like i mean i love it I've always had fun playing it but man man is there so much in that game um, and that's not how I roll when I'm designing a game if there's part of your game that's not working and there will be look to remove rules to fix it rather than adding rules to patch it up uh, because patched up things look like patched up things and that's you know never usually a good thing uh, rule number six or rule is this is a rule it's an idea idea number six expect not um, shit not to work all the time all the time when you do things you'll have you'll have an idea then you will develop this idea 
how it can work with other ideas and somewhere in there things will break and you'll be sitting down to work something out and everything will just stop and jam up. Um, and that will happen all the time. So just expect it and don't be annoyed by it. And when it does happen, maybe don't try and fix it straight away. Go away and do something else for a bit. Um, let things ferment in your head a little while and the idea to fix it with a little bit of time will be m way more sound than if you try and patch something on top of it then and there. And the last bit, the last bit of advice and probably the most important thing is value your playtesters. Um, these are great people that sit down and like listen to you explain something that possibly is still vague in your head. They'll give you like, you know, a few hours of their time when they could be playing Carcassonne or something fun. Um, because not every playtest is interested in everything uh, you do. So every time I get a group of people around a table to try one of my designs, uh, whatever I'm thinking of at the moment, I feel incredibly grateful. Um, and it's something that I do not push people to do. I actually hate playtesting other people's designs. It's like, I find it hard work and I expect everyone else feels the same way as I do. Maybe they don't, but that's how I expect people to feel, you know, do what you know. Um, so when someone is prepared to have a look at your design, you know, don't push it, but be really, really grateful. Anyway, in wrapping up, um, last video was about the sailing game called Wake. I uh, just want to congratulate um, Aquinium and Lily Dog because they're the people that got back to me and wanted a handmade, uh, still print and play, but made by these hands copy of the game. They'll get posted out to you. I'm on to uh, prototype version five now. There's been lots of little tweaks done. Um, nothing outrageous. Uh, changing the scale of the numbers and putting the A's and B's on was the really big thing. And that was in version three, I think. Um, and the game basically works, but I just want to play it with four players a few more times um, before I package it up, uh, put it in a zip file on my free to print and play page and make a couple of copies to post out to people who showed some interest in my work. And thank you very much for that. Anyway, if you're still here, uh, thanks. Thanks for your time and please like and subscribe. If you're interested in how Tricky Pirates or Dive 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 works, or Country Trains actually, which is probably the game I'm most proud of. Um, there are some videos, which I'll link down there, that explain how those games uh, work too. Just a five minute video explaining the rules. All of the games I design have rules that will fit on both sides of a sheet of A4. Um, more rules than that is not my jam. Thanks for watching.